Mercedes is preparing to exceed the budget cap. Miss Drama, don't worry, it's back. Oh yes, some sweet Mercedes versus Red Bull drama. We've missed these situations in 2022. Mercedes was too focused on trying to get better that they forgot to constantly argue with their arch nemesis. But don't worry folks, we've got you covered. Now that the season is pretty much over, how could have Mercedes missed the opportunity to put further shame on Red Bull for exceeding the cost cap? There was no better moment than this one to start a new argument with the Austrian team and with Formula One in general. So in this video, we are going to be taking a look at how this situation could end up with Mercedes purposely exceeding the budget cap next season and why this matters to us F1 fans. So let's begin. Red Bull is richer than you think, FIA. First, let's make some clarifications, just to get back on the right track. Probably already know if you don't live under a rock, Red Bull apparently exceeded the budget cap in 2021 by $2.2 million. The risks for the team were high, as they could have even gotten Max's championship taken out of their hands following this event. Fortunately for them, it just turned out to be a minor breach, as $1.7 million of their exceeded money was there just because a tax credit wasn't applied correctly. If it was applied correctly, the infraction would have been just $0.5 million, which is still a lot of money. Mattia Bonotto, who felt entitled to talk about the situation since he didn't screw up the strategy in the last race so nobody was talking about Ferrari, said that they only use about $7 million a year for car development, and that $500,000 would have helped a lot, especially when creating new types of components. We've seen Red Bull all year long making new components arrive from the factory and creating a new version of the car every time that could go faster than the previous one. Red Bull subsequently had to talk in secret with the FIA, as their punishment was only an accepted breach agreement, or ABA for short. They together decided that the right punishment for the team was a $7 million fine and a 10% wind tunnel reduction time, which will end up being 63% of what Ferrari will have next season. Don't worry, we know nothing will change next season, even if they had a million years in the wind tunnel. Ferrari engineers would still be able to create the midfieldest car possible. So going back to the budget cap, yeah, the punishment was extremely underwhelming. And what makes fans of the sport in general all over the world angry is that it doesn't make any sense. Red Bull is one of the most successful companies in the entire globe, worth over $16 billion, and you think that they can't pay $7 million in fines. Winning the championship is more important to them. This is like an investment. They put down $7 million, win the championship, and get back even more money from advertisements, marketing, merch. Do I need to go on explaining how positively winning the WDC impacts Red Bull's finances? And say that they don't win next season. Do you seriously think they are going to struggle? Going around asking everyone for $7 million? They probably have a credit card where they only put money they need to pay fines with. And it's probably worth more than the whole country of Burundi. And surely the money they overspent this season will have an impact on future seasons as well, since taking an early lead when there are these huge regulation changes is essential in understanding car philosophy and weight reduction measures. Just look at how well Mercedes performed during the hybrid era and you've got yourself an answer to the early lead problem. Unfair punishments, unfair competition Let's get on the right track once again. This video isn't about why Red Bull exceeded the budget cap and if the fine they were given is right or wrong, even if it is evidently wrong, but more on Mercedes threatening to purposely infringe the budget cap after seeing that Red Bull were given only a fine and wind tunnel reduction, Mercedes have assessed the risks of making this kind of move and are ready to do it. This is exactly what the FIA was trying to avoid by making punishments for overspending unclear in the sporting regulations, so that teams wouldn't have even thought about going over budget as the consequences were unknown. But now that there is an example to follow, Mercedes is surely going to use this to their advantage. With this precedent to use in court against the FIA if they are ever going to sue each other for this, Mercedes should just get away with a fine and wind tunnel time reduction, just like what happened in the past. Furthermore, when Red Bull overspent, they won the Drivers' Championship, so it wasn't just something that didn't change the results of the 23 races. The championship battle ended on the last lap of the last race, where the drivers arrived with equal points. You can't say that it wouldn't have mattered in the end. A $7 million fine, or even a heftier one while we're on topic, wouldn't really affect Mercedes' finances in any way. Just to give context on how much they're willing to spend on this sport, in 2020, when the budget cap didn't exist, they spent over $480 million. If they had used 2019 cars, they could have bought a whole grid and created their own championship. 
while Ferrari spent over 460 and still managed to get sixth place behind Renault, so that's something. Now focusing a bit less on the money side of things, could the 10% wind tunnel reduction affect Mercedes if they went for this strategy? Well, not really. We've seen how they managed to remain under the budget this season, but still create an F1 car worthy of getting podiums at every one of the last races. So 500,000 more will surely help them out more than the wind tunnel reduction will make them uncompetitive. And of course, they could even go less over budget, getting less fines and total punishments while still gaining a significant advantage. Mercedes is in the right position to overspend. But we all know how it is nowadays. You get what you want. As Toto Wolf said in an interview regarding the punishments for the budget cap, and in any case, it would not be fair because it would sanction the right to cheat by paying a fine. And that's right. So to make him happier, the FIA would probably disqualify Mercedes from the whole championship, rendering their work useless. But how could the FIA solve this problem, where teams are now willing to try overspending to just see if it's worth it? Well, first of all, by sorting things out. For example, everyone committing an infraction should have the same punishment, but it would need to be something more serious like disqualification from the season or a reduction in each driver's points by a half, a third or something like that. Or remaining on the topic of fines, which the FIA seems to like a lot, they could need to pay back fines three times, four times, or something along those lines in the next season. Not using personal money, diminishing the budget by said amount. This way, we can be sure that nobody is ever overspending, as no team with a sane team principle would sacrifice every season after the current one for a win in the drivers or constructors. Since, as you already know, not being competitive in one season could mean dragging that disadvantage for a long, long way. Just look at how much Red Bull had to wait after the disaster in 2014, when they were not competitive to once again dominate in this sport. Not to mention the fact that most of the expenses are there because of traveling costs and staff paying. Making an example of a team. Overspending ruins the spectacle for everyone, so it should be avoided at all costs even when harsher ways of getting teams to obey are necessary. For example, just look at the power units of each car and you will notice how all of these are legal. Why don't teams try to get away with new ways of extracting power from the engine in dark areas of the regulations? Well, simply because they saw what the FIA is capable of doing and how much Ferrari suffered being penalized in 2019, throwing in the bin two championships during which they weren't competitive at all. So it's right to make the first one to make a mistake suffer the most, so that the other ones understand why doing mistakes by accident or on purpose will be bad for them. Did the FIA do this? No, absolutely. We will see teams overspending like Mercedes threatened. Probably, we just need to wait and see for now. But one thing is clear, they are ready to start overspending whenever they want. So what do you think? Will Mercedes actually overspend next season? Will we see them coming back on top in 2023 after some illegal ways of getting more performance out of the car? Let us know with a comment below and don't forget to subscribe because at 10,000 subscribers, we're going to try to become the leaders of the FIA so that we can disqualify everyone who does something wrong from the championship. No, not really, but you should subscribe anyway.